today is the ninth week after Pentecost. It's the woman's day. August is the woman's month. You struck the woman, you struck the rock. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect up to on top of page 105. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wetly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two, command, two commandments depend on the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Let us confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your, of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may save you in the newest of life to the glory of your name. Let us receive the absolution. Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm us and free in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect of the day Saint Mary the Virgin God our Savior you looked on the loneliness of the blessed Virgin Mary and received her into your glory. Teach us to humble ourselves before you and bring us also to the splendor of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading is taken from the book of Revelation 12, beginning from the 13th verse. When the dragon realized that it had been thrown down to the earth, it tried to make trouble for the woman who had given birth to a son. 
But the woman was given two wings, like those of a huge eagle, so that she could fly into the desert. When she would escape from the snake and be taken care of a time, two times, and half a time, the snake then spewed out water like a river to sweep the woman away. But the earth helped her and swallowed the water that it came from the dragon's mouth. This made the dragon terribly angry with the woman. So it started a war against the rest of her children. They are the people who obey God and are faithful to what Jesus did and taught. The dragon stood on the beach beside the sea. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to good news proclaimed in the gospel according to Mark. Chapter 5, reading from verse 25. There was a woman who had suffered terribly from severe bleeding from, for 12 years. Even though she had been treated by many doctors, she had spent all her money, but instead of getting better, she got worse all the time. She had heard about Jesus, so she came in the crowd behind him, saying to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will get well. She touched his cloth, and her bleeding stopped at once. And she had the feeling inside herself that she was healed of her trouble. At once Jesus knew that power had gone out of him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, you see how the people are crowding you. Why do you ask who touched you? Who touched you? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. The woman realized what happened to her. The woman realized what had happened to her. So she came trembling with fear, knelt at his feet, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, my daughter, your faith has made you, made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your trouble. This is the Gospel of Christ. Good morning, everyone. It gives me a great pleasure and an honor to introduce um, to you our guest speaker for today since it is a woman's uh, month. Reverend Wooly Wooly, so welcome her and just hear what God has laid in her heart as she ministered to us this morning. Good morning people of God. I am so grateful and thankful to be here this morning. I want to thank Reverend Tanase for inviting me to just share the word of the Lord with you this morning. So my text this morning is in Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 to 18. So before I share what God has put in my heart, let us just pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to serve you still. Lord, you know I'll be praying and soaking into your word, worshipping you. And I know there's something important you want us to hear. So Father, right now, just want you to clear the atmosphere in houses of your beloved people, Lord, that you will actually hold them in your word and that you will hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I was praying and God just revealed to me the scripture reading of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 13 to 17. Now, theologians will tell you that this analogy speaks about the church. I was reading through this passage and I took it literally, you know, quite literally, that it is talking about a woman who had to hide after being persecuted. If you read the whole chapter, please do, in your own time, you will get the full story. And I hope it will bless you as it blessed me. It says that when this woman starts off, she is pregnant and pregnancy, what is pregnancy? Pregnancy gives you hope, it gives you purpose, 
and it allows you to think about a vision. And all of a sudden, we are told that there was a dragon that appeared in front of this woman as she was about to give birth. And when this dragon appears, you see this woman was about to give birth, but then comes this dragon. But notice one thing here that I want you to underline. She does not stop giving birth just because the dragon appeared. She pushes anyway. When she pushes the baby out, what did God do? He pulled the baby. She produces that seed and God pulls the seed out. After producing the seed, the woman had to run into the wilderness, that is what we taught, to a place that God had prepared for her, a place that was supposed to nourish her. You see, there are a lot of women who get to find themselves in a place that God did not prepare for them. This is a place which is so important because it is not just a temporary shelter. God gave her this place. Now the Greek word here is stifle. This was a place that was to strengthen this woman so that she is not tossed to and from anymore. That place that God positions her to make her stand flat-footed and declare the work of the Lord. That place removes the fear from your heart and mind. It enables you to walk into any room and not be broken about anything that anyone says about you because you set things in motion and decide to leave things that hurt you. And on this woman day, I want to talk about how God sets his word in motion in our lives because God sets things in motion in our lives so that we can move away from the hurt that the dragon brings. Because there are a lot of dragons that we experience in our lives. They come in shapes and different sizes. So it enables you to walk into any room and not be broken. Because as I said, you set things in motion. When you sit in this place that God has prepared for you, you are set free. But what happens when you're not in this place that God had prepared for this woman? When you step out of the place where God put you in because you think you do not have a seed anymore or you do not have any value. Because there are so many women in our country that think that they don't have value. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you have value because God loves you. And when you have value in the Lord, you have value even with your peers, you have value with your life, with your value, with your community. So when you step out of the place where God has put you, because you think you do not have value, the dragon gives us an indication of what that woman is. I want you to underline that because sometimes, just sometimes, your greatest blessing comes from your enemy. Did you know that? That sometimes your greatest blessing comes from your enemy. Because the dragon is the enemy. Because your enemy has a tendency of telling you who you are. The tendency is that it tells you who you are. When I saw that the dragon was persecuting the women, I thought to myself, why is the dragon persecuting the women? I mean, the seed was gone. Was gone. God had pulled up the seed. I mean, the produce was gone. The child was gone. So why? Why still persecute the woman? Even in this day and age, the dragon is still persecuting the woman. Even though the produce was gone, God said to me, whatever, it was because the woman is son. And the woman is not just any son. But she is good soil. Do you believe that you are good soil? Because when you are a woman, you have to believe that you are good soil. And that whatever God throws at you, you are able to produce. So when God said to me that the woman is soil, the 
welcome you this. Because God, whatever God throws another seed at her, she's able to produce something again. She has the power to crush the head of the enemy because the seed, not just a child, but what is in her has the power to crush the head of the enemy. So I believe that God wants me to tell you the reason the enemy is coming at you even now is because you are so and not just any soul. So the moment you realize you are soul, you get to set things in motion. And you get to not allow abuse to take place. You will not be able, you will not be a victim, but a victor. You will realize your potential and what God has imparted in you. So this morning, God just wants me to tell you, you need to shift and change your mindset. So 
So God has your wings and they're waiting for you. You just need to come and get your wings so that you can get to a place where God wants you to be in. And it says that even though God had given him the wings, the devil, the dragon, spewed out water and wanted to drown the woman. But look at what God says. God says he opened up the mouth of the earth and swallowed the water. And God says today, I want to swallow the pain that you're in. I want to swallow the depression that you're in. I want to swallow everything that holds you and hinders you to come to me. Because the earth is mine and everything that is in it is mine. So this morning, as you celebrate Women's Day, I want you to know and tell other women, God has a place for you. He's never forgotten you. Amen. Create a right spirit in me, Lord, as it is the month for women. We thank you, Lord, for mothers, sisters and friends who have moulded young women throughout the ages. We ask, Lord, that you would create a right spirit in us, a spirit of wisdom, justice and peace, that we would stand firm in times of trial and put our trust in you. We pray for women throughout the world and especially those in Africa, who fight for justice against inequality, that you would strengthen them, Lord. We pray also for mothers at this time, who are struggling to put a plate of food on the table for their children, and those who mourn. Be with them, Lord. Comfort them. We pray for women who live in fear, for those who are threatened and those that live in abusive relationships, for the young girls that are kidnapped and sold into slavery. Hear our prayer, Lord. We pray also for an end to this pandemic that has engulfed the world. Save us, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare for the spiritual communion, we are on page 514. Recollection of God's presence. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Let us pray. On page one, on, on page five sixteen. Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run, run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed you, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes. When with your the saints I may praise you forever. Amen.
the consecration of elements. Page 180. Hear us, Heavenly Father. And with your word and Holy Spirit, bless and sanctify this bread and wine, that it also <coughs> may be the sacrament of the precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took bread, the cup, and said, This is my body and blood. Thank you. 